This bottle is made of polyethylene. This container is made of polypropylene. These safety glasses are polycarbonate. In manufacturing, the material choice is dictated by the functional requirements of the part and by cost. Should the part flex or stay rigid? Does it need to resist heat or cold? Can a living hinge reduce assembly time? Well, there's also a distinction between basic commodity resins such as polypropylene and polyethylene and engineering resins, which have better mechanical and thermal properties and are used for high performance applications. Then there are ceramics and composites. There are thousands of materials out there with hundreds of thousands of different applications. But what about additive manufacturing? Now, engineering.com, well, we spoke with additive manufacturing experts at this year's Rapid TCT trade show hosted in Detroit, Michigan. You don't purchase a printer for the printer. You purchase it to print something. And so the material is going to be your number one choice for production. Materials is, it's really a the go, no go when it comes to enabling the technical feasibility. We're really getting pressure from our, from our high-end customers to start developing more materials faster. Material cost and selection, well, they're one of the major targets in the development and adoption of 3D printing in industrial production. For injection molding, you can order nearly any polymer, neat, as a copolymer, or as a master batch by the Gaylord or truckload. The same goes for machining, with even advanced materials like Teflon or polyethylene or ketone available in bar and sheet stock. But additive processes don't have that established supply chain yet. Most printers use plastics in filament, powder, or even liquid form, and the sizes, shapes, and other specific requirements are very proprietary in many cases. What we've seen 3D printing, starting with prototyping, with powder, and the cost of powder is in the range of 400, so rather expensive. You can do prototyping with that, but then it's, you can basically not move to mass production. Uh, so we started to have filament printing that started to raise there the technology, the cost of a filament is in the range of 100. And uh, what is starting to emerge today is the pellets where the range is around 25 to 30 per kg. So it's all cost per kg. Manufacturers are hesitant to lay out the capital for an additive manufacturing machine, which could range from the mid-thousands to the mid-hundreds of thousands of dollars, especially if the material selection isn't there. And the lower the volume, the more likely the part will be designed for higher value engineering resins. We're seeing a lot of adoption of our high performance materials Beyond tooling, actually parts on cars. Last year, the Penske car that won the Indy 500 had 40 parts on it. For example, this year we have 13 cars in the race. We're seeing a big adoption on Ultim parts on airplanes. In the opinion of many, myself included, the rate of adoption of industrial additive manufacturing lines will be directly correlated to the availability of a diverse range of custom commodity and engineering materials. Now we're getting there with equipment makers working with advanced materials developers like Dow, BASF, DSM and SAVIC. The, the other challenge that you had is that, so you mentioned that very high mechanical properties or very low mechanical properties, so basically you, the industry had a choice between PIC and PLA or ABS. But so you can do a prototype in PLA on ABS, but mechanically it's crap. So there was a big gap between the two. And so what we keep receiving questions from customers, can you guys, because you're the expert of engineering material, can you work and bring your technology available and affordable for the 3D printing? So that's what our uh, team has been working on working on the chemistry to make sure it's workable and that the mechanical property that I used to on when they do injection and blow molding, they can find and reach the same level of properties with proof 3D printing. We've traditionally developed and sold all of our own materials. This advanced partnership was with Solve. It's around a couple of new materials that are very high performance. So by working together with us, understanding extrusion, us inventing extrusion for additive, uh, I think we, we, our belief, and we think it's very true, that we can bring high performance materials to the industry faster. One fascinating category of materials in additive are flexible, compliant polymers like urethanes and elastomers. Now these materials have historically been challenging to print or to manufacture by means other than injection molding. They have really incredible properties in, in terms of strain tolerance, in terms of geometry, and part of this comes from this kind of deep in the weeds chemical phenomenon that, that's driven by these thiols. What it allows us to do is shape the polymerization front of a growing voxel and control how parts stick together very, very nicely in very complex three-dimensional uh, structures. And um, we can do this quickly. In, in the market today, there's this, this big trade-off between printing quickly and printing soft materials. Typically, to print quickly, you have something called a high cross-link density, where you have lots of chemical elements that react together. This forms a stiff, rigid network that doesn't stretch very far. 
These style chemistries allow us to rapidly print very low crosslink densities in a one part, one pot shelf stable system that leads to some of the world's best properties for sort of shore A30 and lower materials. Now ceramics have many properties which make them ideal materials for applications such as rockets, jet engines, medical implants, and electronics. And materials such as tungsten carbide or silicon nitride are some of the hardest that we can make, which makes them great for cutting tools and machine parts. But it's something of a catch-22. If it's so hard that it doesn't wear and so heat resistant that it doesn't melt, how do you shape it? Most composites and ceramics are pressed or molded in a green state and sintered. But additive manufacturing opens up a new range of possibilities for geometry and design with these materials that simply isn't possible by traditional means like dry bag, hot isostatic pressing. We take a, a ceramic powder and we mix that with a uh, photosensitive resin. So we're, we're curing the part with uh, a DLP light technology. So what we're, what we're doing is we're achieving a green part out of our printer that we then uh, debind and sinter to full density of you know 99.5 plus. Aerospace is one of our biggest markets. Medical, we do uh, we make uh, products specific for the medical uh, industry that we're trying to introduce. Um, general manufacturing of ceramics, people who are already making ceramics via injection molding, is a, a very good. Uh, customer for us, uh, just another way to shape that ceramic and create that fully dense product that they're looking for. Now in diamonds, of course, the majority of diamonds in the world are used for industrial purposes, primarily for abrasives, as a fine powder. What is the form of diamond in this case? Oh, it's, it's a diamond grit that, that is included in the material, and then it's cemented into a solid material using a, a pro proprietary process. We, we fuse it with a kind of, of ceramic that we developed. So we print the diamonds, into a fine skeleton. We use a fairly standard equipment using stereolithography. Do you mention anticipate applications for this? Would this be uh, as an abrasive or a cutting tool? Uh, it could be used as a cutting tool. I mean, it, it, thanks to its super hardness, it will last forever in, in, in most applications, we hope. Uh, but it can also be used in, in uh, things like thermal management where you need to take heat away since the, the diamond material has very high heat conductivity. So maybe it can uh, keep your supercomputers cool in the future or, or uh, we're just looking for the new opportunities to new applications uh, that you, we can imagine. Whether they fuse powder, cure resin or lay down filament, 3D printers have come a long way in terms of accuracy, precision, reliability and capability. But if you ask me, material selection is truly the new frontier development for additive manufacturing.